This is Melina Lee Williams Haas. I deeply appreciate you listening and taking the time to hang out with me. I will be addressing issues of life, the universe, and everything that are often bogged down and mired in shame and grief, and talk about how they can be repackaged to be useful and gorgeous and fucking awesome for you. So, sit back and relax, or, you know what? Sit up and freak out. However, you prefer to listen. Let's go. I'd like to read for you one of my favorite pieces of writing on what I believe dominance should absolutely strive for. And it is not from any two-purpose kink book. It is not from any fantasy kink book. It is, in fact, from The Little Prince, which many of us have read. This is from Chapter 10. He found himself in the neighborhood of the asteroids 325, 326, 327, 328, 329, and 330. He began, therefore, by visiting them in order to add to his knowledge. The first of them was inhabited by a king. Clad in royal purple and ermine, he was seated upon a throne which was at the same time both simple and majestic. Ah, here is a subject, exclaimed the king, when he saw the little prince coming. And the little prince asked himself, how could he recognize me when he had never seen me before? He did not know how the world is simplified for kings. To them, all men are subjects. Approach so that I may see you better, said the king, who felt consumingly proud of being, at last, a king over somebody. (laughs) The little prince looked everywhere to find a place to sit down, but the entire planet was crammed and obstructed by the king's magnificent ermine robe. So he remained standing upright, and since he was tired, he yawned. It is contrary to etiquette to yawn in the presence of a king, the monarch said to him. I forbid you to do so. I can't help it. I can't stop myself, replied the little prince, thoroughly embarrassed. I have come on a long journey and I have had no sleep. Ah, then, the king said, I order you to yawn. It is years since I have seen anyone yawning. Yawns, to me, are objects of curiosity. Come now, yawn again. It is an order. That frightens me. I cannot any more, murmured the little prince, now completely abashed. Mm, mm, replied the king. Then I order you to sometimes to yawn and sometimes to... He spluttered a little and seemed vexed. For what the king fundamentally insisted upon was that his authority should be respected. He tolerated no disobedience. He was an absolute monarch. But because he was a very good man he made his orders reasonable. If I ordered a general, he would say, by way of example, if I ordered a general to change himself into a seabird and the general did not obey me, that would not be the fault of the general. It would be my fault. May I sit down? Came now a timid inquiry from the little prince. I order you to do so, the king answered him and majestically gathered in a fold of his ermine mantle. But the little prince was wondering, the planet was tiny. Over what could this king really rule? Sire, he said to him, I beg that you will excuse my asking you a question. I order you to ask me a question, the king hastened to assure him. Sire, over what do you rule? Over everything, said the king with magnificent simplicity. Over everything. The king made a gesture which took in his planet, the other planet, and all the stars. Over all that, asked the little prince. Over all that, the king answered. For his rule was not only absolute, it was also universal. And the stars obey you. Certainly they do, the king said. They obey me instantly. I do not permit insubordination. Such power was a thing for the little prince to marvel at. 
If he had been a master of such complete authority, he would have been able to watch the sunset not 44 times in one day, but 72 or even 100 or even 200 times without ever having to do more than move his chair. And because he felt a bit sad as he remembered his little planet which he had forsaken, he plucked up the courage to ask the king a favor. I should like to see a sunset. Do me that kindness. Order the sun to set. <laughs> If I ordered a general to fly from one flower to another like a butterfly, or to write a tragic drama, or to change himself into a seabird, and if the general did not carry out the order that he had received, which one of us would be in the wrong, the king demanded, the general or myself? You, said the little prince firmly. Exactly. One must require from each the duty which each can perform, the king went on. Accepted authority rests first on reason. If you ordered your people to go and throw themselves into the sea, they would rise up in revolution. I have the right to require obedience because my orders are reasonable. Then my son said, the little prince reminded him, for he never forgot a question once he had asked it. You shall have your sunset. I shall command it. But, according to my science of government... I shall wait until the conditions are favorable. When will that be? inquired the little prince. <laughs> replied the king, and before saying anything, he consulted a bulky almanac. <laughs> that will be about, about, that will be this evening about 20 minutes to eight, and you will see how well I am obeyed. The little prince yawned. He was regretting his lost sunset, and then, too, he was already beginning to be a little bored. I have nothing more to do here, he said to the king, so I shall set out on my way again. Do not go, said the king, who was very proud of having a subject. Do not go. I will make you a minister. Minister of what? Minister of... of justice. But... There is nobody here to judge. We do not know that, the king said to him. I have not yet made a complete tour of my kingdom. I am very old. There is no room here for a carriage, and it tires me to walk. Oh, but I have looked already, said the little prince, turning around to give one more glance to the other side of the planet. On that side, as on this, there was nobody at all. Then you shall judge yourself, the king answered. That is the most difficult thing of all. It is much more difficult to judge oneself than to judge others. If you succeed in judging yourself rightly, then you are indeed a man of true wisdom. Yes, said the little prince, but I can judge myself anywhere. I do not need to live on this planet. <clears throat> said the king. I have good reason to believe that somewhere on my planet there is an old rat. I hear him at night. You can judge this old rat. From time to time, you will condemn him to death. Thus, his life will depend on your justice, but you will pardon him on each occasion, for he must be treated thriftily. He is the only one we have. I, replied the little prince, do not like to condemn anyone to death. And now I think I will go on my way. No, said the king. But the little prince, now having completed his preparations for departure, had no wish to grieve the old monarch. If your majesty wishes to be promptly obeyed, he said, he should be able to give me a reasonable order. He should be able, for example, to order me to be gone by the end of one minute. It seems to me the conditions are favorable. As the king made no answer, the little prince hesitated a moment, then, with a sigh, he took his leave. I make you my ambassador, the king called out hastily. He had a magnificent air of authority. The grown-ups are very strange, the little prince said to himself as he continued on his journey. If you're someone who is curious about kink and BDSM but has no doggone idea where to start, I got you. 
First off, I'm the co-author of a book called Playing Well with Others, The Guide to Exploring, Navigating, and Discovering the Kink, Leather, and BDSM Relationships. You can find that on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. But let's say you want a more personal one-on-one -on -one interaction. I got you, fam. Go to thekinkdoula.com. It's T-H-E-K-I-N-K-D-O-U-L-A. You may be familiar with the concept of doulas from childbirth, but what about rebirthing yourself? What about going deep within and uncovering the secrets and wondrous discoveries that maybe, just maybe, have been hiding from you or you've been hiding from yourself for a long time? You want to talk about your secret fetish, your kink? Perhaps just you're curious about how to expand your mind a little bit more into becoming the person you truly want to be. Contact me at thekinkdoula.com and let's see who you can become. When I first started in my service to Der Spousemeister, who is now my husband, he recited a little bit about this, about the king consulting the almanac. And that touched my heart so deeply. A, because of course I read the book when I was a kid. And so I knew immediately what he was speaking about. And I realized that here in front of me was the first dominant person who had placed as a priority making their demands reasonable making them accessible, making my compliance not easy because complying with the whims and breezes of a musical genius guy is not fucking easy. But what it does is give you a fighting chance. And it let me know that he was on my side. It's so fascinating to think about how many times I have been in situations, either in a, a relationship that was involving dominance and submission or a vanilla relationship where my needs and wants and desires weren't prioritized, where impossible shit emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever it was, was just something that I had to cope with if I wanted to be in the relationship. It was a condition of being loved that I am constantly perpetually achieving and shining and winning and doing so with a, with a grace that seems effortless. But the reality is we are not only just given that which we can cope with. We are often overwhelmed and crushed down under the weight of life. So often, I think back to the times that I struggled in my submission. My first master-slave relationship was actually just a, a, a DS training relationship. There were very strict protocols on how this particular individual accepted people into their service. And even when a task was odious to me or painful for me, or I just did not have the energy, I would push and push and push to prove myself. Here's the thing. Listen to me carefully. You are enough as you are. I wish someone had been able to look me in the eye or, or pick up a phone and pour those words into my ear 25 years ago. I never felt as though my existence just the purity of my being was enough. I always felt like I had to prove myself. This is part of the baggage of being a quote unquote gifted kid. You're perpetually on this treadmill of proving how gifted you fucking are. This is also going to go back to the fact that as a child, I was a professional actor and I started in on that career when I was six years old and therefore proving that I was worthy of this role. And the next, and the next, and the next was part of my daily life. Add to that, there was no small pressure because I was actually a source of financial support for my family. So if I didn't get a role, that could have a deleterious impact on my life. The other kid actors I knew were just doing it as a lark. They loved that it. it was fun. They wanted to be famous. I had to make sure I got that part because it might be a problem to pay the rent next month if I didn't. 
And so I came up through the sidewalk crack of you need to work and prove yourself in order to live. (laughs) Maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. I mean, you know, it's a rough and tough old world out there, isn't it? But wouldn't it be beautiful if within a relationship you had the safety to just be who you are and have that be enough? sounds like some sort of fantasy to me. Well, it did. Now it doesn't sound like a fantasy. Now it's just my fucking life. Okay. Now this is just my life because I'm ruled by a king who does not demand that I pull the stars out of the sky. What he wants is to be loved unconditionally. What he wants is for us to be happy together. What he wants is to know that his art is supported. These I can give to him at any time, any place, anywhere. That's the core of my service to him. And this is what I really wish for everyone. Oh my God, I wish this for everyone. First and foremost, especially in kink relationships, but in the broader word. But the reality is if you're a kinky person and you're looking for a relationship where you are valued and loved, regardless of what you do, you are up against a wall of people who are out there to prove that they are a super slave and more awesome than you. Okay. And uh, that just shouldn't bloody matter. It really, truly shouldn't. My wish for you is that you find yourself in relation to people who treat you like this king treats his subjects. Never, ever, ever putting them in a situation where they can't. Wow, who wants to live that way? Who wants to live like that? And in this chapter, how beautiful is it that the king knows it is his responsibility if his subject fails? Take this to heart. Dominance, understand and love your submissive partner and do not put in front of them the unattainable. Do not make it so that they break their hearts over a task or over your wishes and desires. Submissives, look for these kings. Look for the ones who have at their heart the strong and beautiful desire to see you succeed. Fuck, that's all we all want, isn't it? I love you. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to All That and Mo. Thanks so much for spending your precious, precious time with me today. My podcast is produced by Cody Crabb, theme music by Georg Friedrich Haas, as performed by Marcus Weiss. And I look forward to spending time with you again really soon.